pivot screws. They're crazy pivot screws. I don't have all of the different ones out there represented here. I have some of them that you're going to come across. Uh, a lot of it is problem solving. Some of them I only have pictures of. I don't have them examples to show you. But I'm going to show you some of the pivot screws that you may come across with shears because you usually will have, even if you don't take them apart, you may have to adjust them and tighten them. So tools that you need. Absolutely have to have a screwdriver. Absolutely have to have a UFO tool. Other optional tools that I would recommend having is other types of UFO tools. I would have you a whole set of bits. Whatever kind of bits you can get. Spanner bits and star bits and hex tools. and You, know, you never know what you're going to come across. I would have these. I would also have scissor pliers. Those are good for ones that you just can't get them apart. And these bits here will fit in the pliers. So these bits will fit in the pliers. So that's, that's handy to have. And the way that works is you just find your screw and adjust it. And this that turns it down to tighten it. Scissor pliers. And it's very helpful to have some tweezers and some pointy nose pliers for some of your shears. So, and also have some kind of container to put your screws in. You could have something with a lid so it doesn't fall on the floor. You could have something like a pill bottle. This works good. You can also, and this is not my highest recommendation, but uh, these little magnetic um, dishes work nice. The only thing I worry about is sometimes you magnetize your screws and it seems to cause problems with the shears if they're magnet if the screws magnetize. So I uh, I caution you whether you use these. But so let's go through some of these crazy screws here. And I've given a lot of these names myself. Um, and uh, I, let's see. Let's just start from the right and work to the left. This one here is an obsolete screw. Very, very common. And if you have to replace it, there is no replacement screw for this. There is a screw that will fit, but you have to modify it. Um, this is a Fromm scissor. There's also Jaguar, which Jaguar and Fromm were both, um, I don't know the whole history, but their screws were the same at one time. And then when Jaguar was bought out, they changed all their screws, and they got some wacky screws. And I don't have examples of all of those. Um, just a lot of these are brass on the Jaguar and on the Fromm, so that they're easy to break and bend. So just be real careful when you're taking these apart. This one I would have to use my pliers, and it's a nut here. So there's a they have a thicker washer. Just Try to avoid having to replace those screws, please, and watch what you're doing. So that's like one of the worst ones out there. But the worst, we'll start with the hardest first. And this is, shear is broken, but it gives you an example. Do you see how it's like a UFO? I call it a UFO. These that use the security bits or the spanner bits type things, use these little UFO tools um, on one side. So you would find what fits here. And then on the other side, it's like a regular screw. So you basically need three hands. One to hold a screwdriver, one to hold the UFO tool, and one to hold a shear. Well, you don't have three hands. So I will, there's a couple of things you can do here. I'll put a screwdriver between my knees and hold it in place and then come in here with my UFO tool. You can also create something like I have on this board, and you see the little bit in here, and you can set your bit on here, which is easier said than done, and then come in with your UFO tool. That works. Another alternative, you can put your UFO bit in your clamp of your machine, and hold your shear on that and then adjust it. Or all kinds of options, none of them are ideal. You can come in here with your scissor pliers 
And if you have one of these little um, spanner bits that's the right size, and that one might fit, and you can come in with that with a screwdriver on the other end and adjust it. Good luck. Fortunately, you don't see these screws very often, but when you do, you freak out over it. Um, I just talked to a sharpener. He's been sharpening for probably 10, 15 years, and he saw his first one. Maybe the first one handed to you. So I said, I'm going to the worst ones first. This is one I only have a picture of. If you come across this one, that's called a spring hopper. When you take this apart, there's a little spring inside and a little well here. And if you're not careful, if you don't hold your hand over it, that spring will go flying across the room. Had it happen at a hair show. Um, you can take it apart. You can put the spring back in there. Just watch what you're doing. But if you see something that looks like this and has that design, that may be a spring washer. I've never seen one that was not purchased in Europe. They always they came from Europe. There's another one from Europe I've seen twice that I don't have a picture of that's got some other little weird things in here that you can easily break. So the caution on any of these weird ones. It's always good if you're worried about whether you can take that shear apart and put it back together. Um, that's when I use these little arc hones and um, just put the ride line in by hand um, without using the water stone. I know it's not the best, but it's better than not being able to put the shear back together and the screw not holding. So that's, that's your option when you can't figure out how to take that screw out or put it back together or whatever is to hand hand hone your the hand hone your shears so all right next hardest weirdest ones here so I've got these two these decorative type of ones yes these are both Banica shears I apologize that we we have some crazy screws on our own this one both are pretty decorative when you turn them over lo and behold that looks like a regular split screw. This looks like a UFO. So this one is nothing but a normal split screw. This unscrews and comes off. Some of them, and I have one here. This one here actually pops off. And it's hard to put back on, so I'm not going to take it apart. But it's the same, same type of screw but you have to wedge your screwdriver underneath it and sort of pop it off and then pop it back in the hole. But this one unscrews, you see, and you come in here with a screwdriver to adjust it. And that's all there is to that one. It just looks a lot more complicated than it is. This is our new peacock shear, and that's got to be one of the prettiest shears ever made. And it's got to be one of the most annoying screws ever made. So you're going to take it apart like a UFO screw. Get the right size here. Got it apart, and you see I have an internal clicker plate there. So that's where your tweezers come in handy to get that little piece out because you don't want to lose it. And then this, it feels like it's not going to come out. So you have to get a pressure and pop it off. Let's get something a little harder to press against. Boom! Did you see that? That's why I told you it's annoying. This actually just presses on here. When I put it back together, my suggestion is to put a little drop of glue there so it actually holds its place in there. But that's how that has to come apart. This is our newest uh, VG10 uh, Olympic Gold Shear. Oh, Gold Shear, because we can't say Olympic. Um, it has ball bearing screws. It comes apart just like, even though it has an extra split in here, it comes apart like a regular UFO. 
UFO type of a screw with an internal clicker plate. See? And see the internal clicker plate in here. And then it doesn't have a washer here. It has like a little groove. Do you see the little groove in here? That's not a washer. And this is a ball bearing. And you see the little ball bearings in there? And that comes off here. So the only difference there, instead of a washer, you have a ball bearing. And that goes back together like your typical UFO screw. And I won't take the time to do that. We'll go on to the next one. These are what I call internal clicker plates with the UFO tools. And the reason I brought both of these out here, this is typically what you'll see is the pretty jewel on the front of the shear. But just notice when you do take them apart, occasionally the pretty jewel will be on the back of the shear as on this one. So just notice how they come apart. Remember the square peg goes in the round hole. That'll help you when you're putting these back together. Now these are what I call external clicker plates. This is pretty common. Take this off. Do you see the clicker plate has a little nipple or a little nose or something that sticks up and one that's more pointy that goes down? That goes in this hole here and then your nut goes on top. We call these external clicker plates, thumb nut screws. And when you put them together, oh, you see it slid on me? You better check and make sure that it didn't move. There. And when it's set right, you'll hear, can you hear that clicking sound? Now these are both external clicker plates. This one's a little different. This does not have the nose that sticks down into a hole, but it is square, so that holds it in position. Pretty straightforward. This is our firefly shear. This screw seems to give a lot of people trouble. It has both an external clicker plate and it has a bell washer underneath here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When the nut comes off, see it has a peg in it. There's my external clicker plate. Looks a lot like the internal clicker plates, doesn't it? And it probably that same style is used as an internal clicker plate on some shears. And you see the bell washer? You'll see these bell washers sometimes on these leaf type shears, these leaf designs. Uh, what it does, it holds that spring that holds the thumb nut on there a little bit tighter because it gives a little bit more cushion to it. And then this comes out like this. And always look for your washer. And remember what I said about the square peg goes in the round hole. So I'm putting that in here. And then you have to kind of play with this. Sometimes you have to turn it around a few times to get it the right, just the right spot. I always put the shears together with the blades not touching. Some people do it with the blades touching. What you don't want to do, you don't want to put it together with the blades half open and half closed. So either all the way open or all the way closed. And my bell washer goes here. And I've seen that sh down and up. I've seen it both ways. Uh, so you just have to kind of watch how it was taken apart and assume if somebody was there before you, they took it apart and put it back together correctly. And you sort of line this up and we're good to go on this one. So that's the external clicker plates. And then I, I call these designs leaf clicker plates or leaf springs. And so they're like an external clicker plate, but they're sort of shaped like a leaf. And they're pretty, they usually have like a little hole that it goes into, like a little nipple goes in there. And they're pretty straightforward. This one is tricky 
because this can be put in on either side. You see that? The reason it's designed like this with a screw on this side, that's for a right-handed person. If you move the screw to the other side, that would be for a left-handed person. Now, it doesn't make it a left-handed shear, but I find a lot of left-handed stylists are used to using right-handed shears and having that screw facing them, and, but yet it's a right-handed screw is, is, is very helpful to some of the stylists that have gone over the years without using true lefties. So just be aware if you get one of these type of screws to notice whether your hairstylist is right-handed or left-handed. And I actually had one stylist who was right-handed, but they wanted the screw on the other side because they normally cut like this and the screw got in the way of the hair and they wanted the screw on this side. So just be observant. This one is looks like an external clicker plate but it has an attached spring to it. You see that? These are some of your older shears. Some of them will have like a rubber thing for friction. These don't hold their adjustments very well, but you know, you may come across them. Last one is one I would not bother to take apart. Uh, these are from Arias Eichert. I haven't, don't know if they're still making them, but you see how it, they're all screwed together. And if you were to take them apart and sharpen them correctly like you're supposed to do, you would have to take out all these screws with the little spacers in between and take those all apart and then be able to put them back. And so make sure you charge, if you do that, charge them for three shears. What I do is I have a very, um, like a thin DMT diamond uh, uh, stone. And I'll go in here and individually do each blade by hand because I don't want to take them apart. But I usually when I quote them the price for three shears, so that would be $90 to sharpen it, which it might be worth $90 to take it apart. Um, they usually say no, they're okay. They're, and they're not a very sharp edge at all, so they usually don't go dull very often. I've only maybe twice maybe three times in my career come across these to be sharpened. But, um, you know, you never know. There's always new types of screws, new types of things coming out. If you see anything new, uh, let me know. Um, send me pictures. Tell me how you took it apart, how you put it back together, so that we can share it with the other sharpeners. And that's part of what our Sharpeners Jam is about. It's part of what Benika Shears is about, is sharing knowledge. Because you may see some things out there um, we've never seen. Or you may see some things out there we've seen and we can help you through it. Uh, we may just not have a sample of it here. So if you have any questions or any new ideas or suggestions on easier ways to uh, work with these screws, please let me know.